Welcome to Safety Pilot. This is an oral exam prep at the private pilot level. Questions are made based on the private pilot ACS. A. Pilot Qualifications What are the requirements to obtain a private pilot certificate? To obtain a private pilot certificate, an individual must be at least 17 years old, able to read, speak, write, and understand English, receive flight training from an authorized instructor, and meet experience and aeronautical knowledge requirements. Can a private pilot act as pilot in command of an aircraft if their medical certificate has expired? No. What are the limitations of a private pilot regarding carrying passengers and operating for compensation or hire? A private pilot may not carry passengers or property for compensation or hire, nor may they act as a pilot in command of an aircraft for compensation or hire. How long is a private pilot certificate valid for? A private pilot certificate does not expire, but remains valid as long as the pilot meets the currency and medical requirements specified. Can a private pilot fly at night without additional training or endorsements? Yes, a private pilot may fly at night as long as they have met the night flying experience requirements during their initial training. What documents must a private pilot have in their possession when exercising the privileges of their certificate? A private pilot must have their pilot certificate, current medical certificate, photo ID, while operating aircraft. Can a private pilot act as a safety pilot for another pilot during simulated instrument flight? Yes. A private pilot may act as a safety pilot for another pilot during simulated instrument flight, provided they hold at least a private pilot certificate and possess the appropriate ratings for the aircraft being flown. Are there any restrictions on the type of aircraft a private pilot can fly? A private pilot may fly any aircraft for which they hold the appropriate category, class, and type ratings, provided they have received the necessary training and endorsements. Can a private pilot log flight time when acting as a safety pilot for another pilot? Yes, a private pilot acting as a safety pilot may log the time as pilot in command if they are the sole manipulator of the flight controls. What are the recency of experience requirements for a private pilot to act as PIC? A private pilot must have completed a flight review within the preceding 24 calendar months and have met any additional requirements for recent experience specified in the regulations. Can a private pilot give flight instruction for hire? No, a private pilot may not act as a flight instructor for hire unless they hold a flight instructor certificate and meet the requirements for providing flight instruction. Can a private pilot fly internationally without additional permissions or endorsements? Yes, a private pilot may fly internationally, but they must comply with regulations and requirements of the countries they intend to fly over or to, including any necessary permissions, clearances, flight plans, or endorsements. B. Airworthiness requirements. What is the significance of the airworthiness certificate, and when must it be displayed in the aircraft? The airworthiness certificate signifies that the aircraft conforms to its type design and it is in condition for safe operation. It must be displayed prominently within the aircraft and be readily accessible to passengers and crew during the flight. What documents must be on board the aircraft during flight according to airworthiness requirements? The aircraft's airworthiness certificate, registration certificate, Operating limitations and weight and balance data must be on board during all flights. Explain the concept of minimum equipment list and its significance for airworthiness. The minimum equipment list, or MEL, is a list of equipment that may be inoperative for flight under specific conditions. It allows aircraft to operate within with certain equipment temporarily disabled while ensuring that essential systems and components are functioning properly for safe flight.
What are the requirements for aircraft ins maintenance and inspections to maintain airworthiness? Aircraft must undergo regular maintenance inspections as outlined in the manufacturer's maintenance manual and comply with regulatory requirements such as annual inspections, 100-hour inspections, and inspections after major alterations or repairs. Describe the purpose of the aircraft logbooks and their importance for maintaining airworthiness. Aircraft logbooks document the maintenance, inspections, repairs, and alterations performed on the aircraft throughout its operational life. They provide a comprehensive record of the aircraft's maintenance history. What is the role of the pilot in ensuring the airworthiness of the aircraft before each flight? The pilot is ultimately responsible for conducting a pre-flight inspection of the aircraft to determine if the aircraft is in a safe and airworthy condition. Explain the importance of adhering to weight and balance limitations for maintaining airworthiness. Weight and balance limitations ensure that the aircraft's center of gravity remains within acceptable limits during flight, preventing instability and potential loss of control. What are the requirements for maintaining the air aircraft's emergency equipment in an airworthy condition? Emergency equipment such as fire extinguishers, emergency locator transmitters ELTs, and survival kits must be inspected, serviced, and maintained according to manufacturer specifications. Explain the purpose and function of the aircraft's type certificate data sheet in determining airworthiness. The type certificate data sheet provides detailed information about the aircraft's design, configuration, limitations, and performance characteristics. It serves as a reference document for determining the aircraft's airworthiness, including its eligibility for specific operations and modifications. What are the requirements for maintaining the aircraft's avionics and electrical system in an airworthy condition? Avionics and electrical systems must be inspected, tested, and maintained according to the manufacturer's specifications. Explain the procedure for conducting a pre-flight inspection of the aircraft's control surfaces and flight controls to ensure airworthiness. During a pre-flight inspection, pilots visually inspect the aircraft's control surfaces, including ailerons, elevators, rudders, and trim tabs, for proper alignment, security, and freedom of movement. They also check flight controls for proper rigging, attachment, and operation to ensure airworthiness and flight safety. C. Weather information. What is a METAR and how is it used by pilots for flight planning? A METAR, Meteorological Aerodrome Report, is an aviation weather report that provides current weather conditions at a specific airport or aerodrome. Pilots use METARs to access visibility, ceiling, wind direction, and speed, temperature, dew point, and other relevant weather parameters to make informed decisions during flight planning. Describe the significance of TAFs, Terminal Aerodrome Forecasts, for flight planning and decision making. TAFs provide forecasted weather conditions at specific airports or aerodromes for a spe specified period, typically up to 24 or 30 hours in advance. Pilots use TAFs to anticipate changes in weather conditions, including visibility, ceiling, wind, and precipitation, to plan flights. Explain the purpose and function of SIGMETs, Significant Meteorological Information, in Aviation Weather Forecasting. SIGMETs provide advisories for significant meteorological phenomena that may affect the safety of aircraft operations, such as severe turbulence, icing, thunderstorms, or volcanic ash. Pilots use SIGMETs to identify potential hazards along their routes of flight and make informed decisions to avoid or mitigate hazards. Describe the information provided in an AIRMET, Airmen's Meteorological Information, and its significance for pilots. Airmets provide forecasted weather conditions that may affect the safety of aircraft operations, 
but are, less, uh, but are of less severity than segments. They include information on moderate icing, turbulence, low-level wind shear, instrument meteorological conditions, and mountain obscuration. Pilots use air mats to anticipate weather hazards and plan flights accordingly. What are the differences between a convective sigmat and a non-convective sigmat? A convective sigmat is issued for severe thunderstorms with surface winds of 50 knots or greater, hail at the surface of three, four, three quarters of an inch or larger, or tornadoes. A non-convective sigmat is issued for hazardous weather phenomena other than convective activity, such as severe icing, severe or extreme turbulence, dust storms, or volcanic ash. Explain the purpose of a PIREP, a pilot weather report, and its significance for in-flight weather assessment. PIREPs provide real-time weather observations and reports submitted by pilots during flight. They include information on turbulence, icing, visibility, cloud layers, and other weather phenomena encountered en route. PIREPs help other pilots act, assess current weather conditions and make informed decisions. What is a surface weather analysis chart? Surface weather analysis charts depict current weather conditions, including pressure systems, fronts, temperature, dew point, and wind direction. They also show significant weather phenomena such as thunderstorms or precipitation. These charts are used by pilots to analyze large-scale weather patterns and identify areas of high or low pressure. Explain density altitude and its implications for aircraft performance. Density altitude is the pressure altitude corrected for non-standard temperature. It represents the altitude at which the aircraft feels. As it relates to performance, high density altitude results in reduced air density which decreases engine performance, reduces lift, and increases takeoff and landing distance. Describe the impact of temperature and humidity on aircraft performance, particularly in relation to density altitude. High temperature and high humidity reduce air density, which increases density altitude and negatively affects aircraft performance. Engines produce less power, aircraft generates less lift, and takeoff and landing distances are increased. Describe the characteristics and hazards associated with microbursts and wind shear. Microbursts are small-scale downdrafts that descend rapidly from a thunderstorm and spread out horizontally upon reaching the ground. They can produce hazardous wind shear conditions, including sudden changes in wind direction and speed, which pose a significant risk to aircraft during takeoff and landing. Pilots should be vigilant and avoid microbursts and wind shear, and take heed of wind shear alerts. Explain the procedure for obtaining a pre-flight weather briefing, including several available sources. Pilots can obtain weather briefing from sources such as flight service stations, online weather websites, mobile applications, and automated weather briefing systems. Briefings include information on current and forecasted weather conditions, including METARs, TAFs, SIGMETs, AIRMETs, radio imagery, satellite data, and aviation weather hazards. D. Cross-country flight planning. What factors should you consider when planning a cross-country flight? When planning a cross-country flight, factors con to consider include weather conditions, airspace restrictions, route selection, fuel requirements, alternate airports, navigation aids, and performance limitations of the aircraft. Explain the importance of conducting a thorough pre-flight weather briefing before a cross-country flight. A pre-flight weather briefing provides essential information on current and forecasted weather conditions. This allows pilots to assess potential hazards, plan for diversions, and make informed decisions regarding the safety of the flight, as well as performance of the aircraft in time and route. Describe the process of obtaining a weather briefing for a cross-country flight and the available sources of weather information.
Pilots can obtain weather briefings from sources such as flight service stations, automated flight, flight service stations, direct user access terminal systems, online weather websites, mobile applications, and aviation weather services. What are NOTAMs and why are they so important for cross-country flight planning? NOTAMs, Notice to Air Missions, contain critical information about temporary changes to air navigation facilities, airspace restrictions, airport closures, and other potential hazards along the planned route. Explain how to calculate the fuel requirements for a cross-country flight, including factors to consider. Fuel requirements for a cross-country flight depend on factors such as distance, aircraft performance, wind conditions, alternate airport options, and reserve fuel requirements. Pilots calculate fuel needed based on fuel consumption rates, time in route, and potential deviations from the planned route. Describe the importance of selecting suitable alternate airports for cross-country flight planning. Selecting suitable alternate airports ensures that pilots have viable options for landing in case of unexpected weather deterioration, airport closures, or other emergencies along the planned route. Alternate airports should have adequate facilities, suitable weather conditions, and be within a reasonable distance for diversion. Explain the concept of VFR flight planning and the elements required for a VFR flight plan. VFR, Visual Flight Rules, flight planning involves determining the route, altitude, and expected time en route for a visual navigation flight. Elements of a VFR flight plan include departure and destination airports, planned route, estimated time, fuel on board, and pilot information. What are the regulations regarding airspace requirements for VFR cross-country flight planning? VFR cross-country flights must comply with airspace requirements, including minimum altitudes, airspace classification and communication requirements specified in FAR Part 91. Pilots should be familiar with airspace classifications and requirements such as Class Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, and Golf, and adhere to relevant regulations. Describe the process of conducting a weight and balance calculation for a cross-country flight. Weight and balance calculations starts with determining the aircraft's total weight and center of gravity, ensuring that they are within allowable limits specified in the aircraft's flight manual. Pilots calculate the weight of occupants, baggage, fuel, and other items to ensure safe and balanced flight. What is the importance of wind correction and how does it affect ground speed and track? Wind correction is necessary to compensate for the effect of wind on the aircraft's ground speed and track. Pilots calculate the wind correction angle and adjust their heading or track to maintain the desired course over the ground and achieve the planned ground speed. Describe the procedures for obtaining and interpreting aeronautical charts for cross-country flight planning. Pilots obtain aeronautical charts, including sectional charts, VFR navigation charts, and terminal area charts to plan cross-country flights. Chart symbols, airspace boundaries, navigation aids, terrain features, and other important relevant information must be interpreted for the pilot to plan navigation. Explain the importance of conducting a thorough pre-flight inspection of the aircraft before a cross-country flight. A pre-flight inspection ensures that the aircraft is in a safe and airworthy condition for flight. A pilot must visually inspect the aircraft's exterior and interior, check essential systems, controls, and instruments, and verify the availability of required documentation to ensure a safe and successful cross-country flight. E. Performance and Limitations What factors affect the performance of an aircraft during takeoff? Aircraft weight, density altitude, wind conditions, runway length, and aircraft configuration, such as flaps or cowl flaps. Explain the concept of density altitude and its impact on aircraft performance.
Density altitude is the pressure altitude corrected for non-standard temperature. High density altitude reduces aircraft performance by decreasing air density. Describe the effect of aircraft weight on performance during climb, cruise, and descent. Heavier aircraft require more power to climb and may have reduced climb performance. In cruise, increased weight results in higher fuel consumption and decreased range. During descent, heavier aircraft may require higher descent rates to maintain airspeed. What is the significance of the aircraft's center of gravity and how does it affect performance? The center of gravity is the point where the aircraft balances longitudinally. An out-of-balance CG affects stability and control, potentially leading to reduced maneuverability, control responsiveness, and stall characteristics. Explain the concept of maneuvering speed and its importance for aircraft performance. Maneuvering speed, VA, is the speed at which an aircraft can perform full control deflections on one axis without exceeding the aircraft's structural limits. It's, structural, it's crucial to prevent structural damage, especially during turbulent conditions or abrupt control inputs during maneuvers. What are the effects of high density altitude on aircraft performance and operation? High density altitude reduces aircraft performance by decreasing engine power, lift generation, and propeller efficiency. It also affects aircraft control and handling characteristics, requiring longer takeoff and landing distances and reducing climb performance. What is the purpose of establishing weight and balance limitations for an aircraft, and how are they determined? Weight and balance limitations ensure that the aircraft remains within safe operating parameters, preventing overstress of the airframe and maintaining stability and controllability. They are determined based on the aircraft design, structural limitations, and center of gravity limits. What is the significance of an aircraft's maximum takeoff weight and maximum landing weight? Maximum takeoff weight, MTOW, and maximum landing weight, MLW, represent the maximum weight at which an aircraft can safely take off or land. Exceeding these limits may can compromise performance, runway requirements, and structural integrity, posing safety risks. What is the effect of wind on aircraft performance during takeoff and landing? A headwind increases lift and reduces ground speed, resulting in shorter takeoff distances. Tailwinds decrease lift and increase ground speed during landing, requiring longer landing distances and potentially compromising safety. List some limitations associated with using flaps during takeoff and landing. Flaps increase lift and drag during takeoff, allowing for shorter takeoff distances but limiting airspeed and climb performance. During landing, flaps increase lift and drag, allowing for steeper descent angles and slower approach speeds but requiring careful management to prevent stalls. How does altitude affect aircraft performance and engine power output? As altitude increases, air density decreases, reducing engine power output, thrust, and engine and aircraft performance. Reduced air density also affects lift generation, requiring higher true air speeds for equivalent lift. Describe the limitations associated with the use of maximum continuous power, MCP, for prolonged periods. Prolonged operation at maximum continuous power can lead to engine overheating, increased wear and tear, and reduced engine longevity. It's essential to adhere to manufacturer limitations and recommended power settings to ensure engine reliability and longevity. F. Operation of systems. Explain the function and operation of the aircraft's fuel system. The aircraft fuel system stores, transports, and delivers fuel to the engine for combustion. 
It consists of fuel tanks, fuel lines, fuel pumps, fuel selectors, and other components that ensure proper fuel flow and distribution throughout the aircraft. Describe the procedure for conducting a pre-flight inspection of the aircraft's fuel system. A pre-flight inspection of the fuel system involves visually inspecting fuel tanks, lines, and fittings for leaks, corrosion, or damage. Pilots should also check fuel quantity, drain samples for contamination, and ensure that the correct fuel grade is used according to the aircraft specifications and operating limitations. Explain the function and operation of the aircraft's electrical system. The aircraft's electrical system provides power to essential components, such as lights, avionics, radios, and instruments. It includes a battery for starting, alternators or generators for generating electrical power in flight, and circuit breakers for protecting electrical components. Describe the procedure for conducting a pre-flight inspection of the aircraft's electrical system. A pre-flight inspection of the electrical system may include checking the battery for proper charge, inspecting wiring and connections for damage or corrosion, and ensuring that circuit breakers are in the correct position. Pilots should also verify the operation of essential electrical components such as lights and avionics. Explain the function and the operation of your aircraft's landing gear system. The landing gear system allows the aircraft to take off, land, and taxi on the ground. It consists of wheels, tires, struts, brakes, and retractable mechanisms in retractable gear aircraft. These provide support and control during ground operations. Describe the procedures for conducting a pre-flight inspection of the aircraft's landing gear system. A pre-flight inspection of the landing gear system involves visually inspecting the condition of tires, checking for hydraulic fluid leaks or damage to struts, verifying proper tire inflation and wear, and ensuring that landing gear doors, if applicable, operate correctly. Explain the function and operation of the aircraft's engine cooling system. The engine cooling system regulates engine temperatures by dissipating heat generated during operation. It typically consists of cooling fins, baffles, cowling, air intakes, and cooling air ducts that direct airflow over the engine components to remove heat. Describe the procedure for conducting a pre-flight inspection of the aircraft's engine cooling system. A pre-flight inspection of the engine cooling system involves checking for obstructions or damages to air intakes, inspecting cowling and baffles for secure attachment, and ensuring that cooling air ducts are clear of debris and blockage. Pilots should also verify that engine temperatures are within acceptable limits during ground operations. Explain the function and operation of your aircraft's anti-icing or de-icing systems if, equip if applicable. If not, what are common types of anti-icing equipment? Anti-icing de-icing systems prevent or remove ice accumulation on critical aircraft surfaces, such as wings, tails, and engine inlets. They may include pneumatic boots, heated surfaces, or chemical de-icing systems that provide against ice formation or remove ice buildup during flight. H. Human factors. What is the significance of situational awareness in aviation, and how does it relate to flight safety? Situational awareness refers to a pilot's understanding of the aircraft's current state, its surroundings, and any potential hazards or threats. Maintaining situational awareness is crucial for flight safety, as it enables pilots to anticipate changes, make informed decisions, and take appropriate actions to prevent accidents. Explain the concept of workload management in aviation, and it's important for pilot performance. Workload management involves efficiently allocating attention, resources, and cognitive processes to tasks based on their priority and demands. It's essential for pilots' performance as it helps maintain situational awareness, workload capacity, 
and performance effectiveness, reducing the risk of errors and improving overall safety. Describe the principles of effective communication in aviation and their role in maintaining safety. Effective communication in aviation involves clear, concise, and accurate exchange of information among crew members, air traffic control, and other relevant parties. It plays a crucial role in maintaining safety by ensuring shared understanding of the operational environment, facilitating timely decision making, and preventing or misunderstanding errors. What are common sources of stress for pilots and how can they affect performance? Common sources of stress for pilots include time pressure, weather conditions, equipment malfunctions, and personal factors such as fatigue or distractions. Stress can impair cognitive function, decision making, and situational awareness, leading to errors and compromise safety if not managed effectively. Explain the concept of crew resource management and its importance in aviation safety. Crew Resource Management CRM, involves effective communication decision making and teamwork among crew members to enhance safety and optimize performance. It emphasizes utilizing all available resources including human, technical, and organizational to mitigate risks and achieve successful outcomes. Describe the procedure for conducting a thorough pre-flight briefing with passengers. A pre-flight briefing with passengers should cover essential safety information such as seatbelt usage, emergency exit locations, and emergency procedures. Pilots should also inform passengers about the route, expected weather conditions, and anticipated duration of the flight to ensure their comfort and confidence. What are the regulations regarding the use of personal electronic devices PEDs, in the cockpit? Federal aviation regulations prohibit the use of personal electronic devices in the cockpit during critical phases of flight, such as takeoff and landing, unless authorized by the operator. PEDs should not interfere with aircraft systems or distract flight crew members from their duties. Explain the concept of spatial disorientation and its effect on pilot perception of performance. Spatial disorientation occurs when a pilot's perception of aircraft attitude and motion conflicts with reality, often leading to incorrect control inputs and loss of situational awareness. It can result from various factors including visual illusions, vestibular illusions, and somatographic illusions. Describe the procedure for conducting a forward slip maneuver, including the purpose and recommended technique. A forward slip maneuver is used to increase the aircraft's descent rate without increasing airspeed, allowing for steeper approaches and shorter landing distances. Pilots apply opposite rudder and aileron inputs to create a side slip condition, maintaining alignment with the runway while descending at an increased rate. What are the regulations regarding the use of seat belts and shoulder harnesses in general aviation aircraft? Federal aviation regulations require all occupants of general aviation aircraft to wear seatbelts and shoulder harnesses during taxi, takeoff, and landing, and at any other times when seatbelts are illuminated or required by the pilot in command. Explain the concept of aeronautical decision making, ADM, and its importance in flight safety. Aeronautical decision making involves assessing risks and making sound decisions throughout all phases of flight. It encompasses factors such as situational awareness, problem recognition, and solution implementation to ensure safe and efficient flight operations. 